Uh, here I have artificially edited in the largest um, landing craft, which is the large plane. Uh, let me just verify that data type. So yes, this is classified as, as large plane. Let me pause for a second because I don't want to lose this timer down here. So the, the three largest is just large, which um, I think is 7x7. Seven seven. And large gas, I think, is also 7x7. Seven seven, but the large plane is 7x9 and requires a runway of 20, which is what we have. I've also artificially given myself um, 23 minutes to resolve the signal. So uh, let's resolve that signal. Okay, 17 degrees uh, seems to be enough to um, lock down this uh, this trader. So we're going to call the trader. And this is going to be one of the harder traders because it also requires an oxygen-rich environment for the trader to come out. There's two traders now. There's a robot trader, which is one that we've seen all the time. And then there seems to be a human trader. I've only seen a female one at this point, but there might be more. I'm not sure if I switch... My primary antenna, will that cancel the interrogation? Okay, I've got that thing contacted, so I can mess around a little bit more here. Oh, it won't tell me. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Let's bring it down. Well, first, let's uh, save. And then bring it down, just in case... Um, I've not configured something properly. And then we'll run over here, and we'll see this huge son of a bitch coming down on the runway. Uh, the outer marker is there. And that is set for... Um, that to be two squares above... That was not cool. It may have it may have actually hit the canyon walls. Okay, we're in mid crash, I think. Are we in mid crash? Oh no, I glitched it into uh, into the hangar. Okay, so this is the largest craft uh, to fit in this space, but it's not the largest craft to. Um, why is it pointed in that direction? It should be pointed in this direction. It's not the largest craft uh, for height. Um, that would be the, the gas trader. Is, uh, it takes up most of this room. Um, but let's, let's start the compression process. Just because I want to look at this thing. I'm just going to reverse my pumps here. Turn them on. And that trader has almost all the same requirements as uh, as we do, as um, um, as entities. Okay, we probably have enough in there for the trader to come out. So let's enter in the basic airlock, and it's the same woman again. And this one happens to be selling. Um, basic supplies. Now, I did edit... I think that's a symbol for euros. I did edit the existing trader in um, to change the shuttle type, so it probably didn't change the uh, the inventory. There's much better availability, too, it looks like. Uh, and she comes out as soon as the, as soon as the air uh, is breathable. Okay, let's reverse the process and get them out of here because we've already seen how how big this one is um, I can actually probably add it in each one of the crafts so let's do that uh, here is the large gas trader and that is the first time I've seen that um, move out these tanks that's cool that's actually pretty cool you can jump on these things, but there's the, the hitboxes are are, are screwy. So once you get up there, you can't move around. Jet let's look inside on. the co let's look inside the cockpit. Can we get in there. Mm, it doesn't look like there's any entrance to the uh, to the cockpit. 
so let's see the third largest size now. And this is the third largest size. And I've seen this one before. And that has like... Jetpack on. A bunch of cargo containers in the back here. Ooh, we can get in this way. Or we can't. No, we can't get in that way. Can I look? This has got an interesting uh, way of entering the aircraft, uh, the um, spacecraft. It sort of reminds me of uh, um, the last Starfighter, because in the last Starfighter, they had some kind of elevator system that brought them up to the uh, to the flight deck canopy. Now, this one I think is the is the smallest of the three largers in uh, in terms of footprint. Yeah, so this one, even though it's registered as large, is 6x6. Six six. Uh, and the next one is the 7x7. Seven seven. Um, and that is the medium aircraft. And you need 15 squares um, of landing room. Now, I should point out that I saw the 9x9 um, the nine nine with the uh, 20 squares of landing when I first started up this session um, to start testing things. And then I wanted to see um, which craft I would uh, I would get the dice roll for and be able to look at. And the game has been running in the background for 12 hours. 12 hours. One, two hours. That's half a day. And I haven't seen um, another instance of the 9x9 with the 20 runway. I had to edit that in to be able to show it. Now, I don't know if the game is looking at the glide path here and seeing that it's not safe for it to land and so not showing it. Um, that would seem to be very unlike, uh, very unlike the, um, uh, the developers. Uh, and non-planes will also uh, obey this glide path. They will come in to your marker and you can have more than one marker here. So uh, you can tell it to come down to a certain level, fly at a certain level, then come down a little lower, and then fly at a certain level. Um, but it it looks like it has to be at a 45 degree, uh, 45 degree maximum glide slope to get to these things. So because this goes out to infinity, the aircraft or spaceship will come down at like a, it looks like a 45 degree angle. It may not be to here, and this is set to be two above. Uh, it's not going to show it, but it's two above, so it'll get right there. Let's let's put a block up there, just to illustrate. You can see the game is sort of twitching a little bit, so that's one, that's two. Okay, so it'll fly, uh, it'll end up in that position. Now, it seems like it's the bottom of the aircraft that ends up in that position, I think, or it might be the middle. What do, I, what do I have it set to? Yeah, two. So, um, zero, I think, is... What do I have it set to? Yeah, that's, that's, that's two. That's uh, two. And that's one. And that's zero. So, maybe it's half heights. And not a full block height, which is kind of weird, uh, given how this game is set up. So it'll pass. I've set it up to pass through that. The bottom of the uh, of the craft will pass through that, and then from this point in its glide slope um, to the uh, to the numbers. I don't know what they. Well, I don't know what they would call that. Um, in aviation terms. I've only ever heard of it called called the numbers. Um, would be like that angle. And it does obey that angle. So I can lift this up a little bit more for that to be a 45 degree angle. And I could have less clearance tolerances in here. But we're not going to do that. And again, because this is cheated in, she's going to have the exact same uh, inventory as the other ones. So... Uh, and they all, there's only three, it only seems like there's three designs. 
and they all look basically the same. Just some are bigger and some are smaller. And the, but they're all have the same kind of speed limit coming in. Okay, let's reload uh, the bigger craft again. And this is mostly because I want to see what the clearance tolerances of this thing is. So I'm not even going to, I'm not going to bother to decompress properly because I'm just going to reload um, to this point in the save again. And I'll just explosively decompress the uh, thing. She should jump in. Yeah, okay, she's jumped back in quickly. So it looks like it'll probably clear that, but not clear that. So let's tell it to get lost. And we can see which one of those blocks uh, it breaks. Now, it it should be able to uh, power its way through one unwelded block without exploding. But if I were to have two or three there, it might explode. And it'll, it'll explode rather spectacularly. Okay, it, uh, it, it did hit... Um, it did hit that one... Oh, they go away a lot faster, too. They come in slowly, but they go away a lot faster. Uh, it did hit that one block Jet right there. On. Okay, so let's reload. Uh, with a large plane this time. And that has... A complete, that will completely clear. Uh, we actually only need half the size for uh, the plane. So it might, uh, it might be a good idea to have uh, multiple landing ports and to customize them to the size that you want because it would be much faster to compress and decompress. Compressing this space was, recompressing this space was very easy, but decompressing it will take like close to five minutes probably. Um, we won't bother, we won't bother launching that because we already know that will, actually we will launch that because I want to see what it hits on the other side. There is a slim possibility that it's striking the uh, the marker there. I don't think it is. I think it's. I think the wings are hitting the uh, the valley over there, which is why I built this right here. I wanted to see um, what the terrain will do uh, when it intersects the the aircraft or the the craft. Uh, this also needs to have a runway that's that's three wide. Uh, all the rest just need a one wide. Uh, runway. If I if I were to remove these two sides, this one actually. Let's see if that if that happens. Will I haven't actually tested this yet. We'll destroy this part of the runway, and we'll see if it notices. It uh, it'll still register as a valid runway, but as you can see, the wheels are on uh, this line. So let's see if that screws it up. Oh, doesn't seem to care. But. Yeah, as soon as it hits, um, as soon as the wings hit the, uh, the, uh, corners here, it destroys. Uh, back to the large shuttle again, because this one is the tallest. As you can see, it hits right up to the top there. And I wanted to see if this one will clear the, um, the obstacles. Okay, so it, it has hit both of them. So, this is the minimum height... Will that go through there? Oh, it it's hit something. Okay, this is just classifying itself as wreckage. And I think this is the wreckage from the, um, from the frame. It doesn't identify as anything special. Six high seems to be the maximum that you, that you need, which is, is good because the, the doors, the, uh, hangar doors are only three wide. So, if you want the the hangers to the hangar doors to function properly, six is about the maximum you could do. I'm shocked that they didn't add something that was seven in and just mess everything up, but they didn't. <clears throat> also, uh, and that just seems to be for the just large type shuttle, the large gas type shuttle, and this one I think then this one also has the smallest footprint I believe at six by six. So you only need um, uh, an internal footprint of six squares by six squares for that thing to be able to land and sit properly. Oh, so it's not, it's, it's not actually, hmm. so it's, it may be overhanging one extra. So I guess you would need a seven by seven to properly store it. 
to properly sit it down because or else because it's not lopsided in the um uh in the internal help files there is a a two wide of this of this of the center but i can't actually find it to put it in to actually spawn it into the game but it is listed in the the f1 wikipedia uh which i might as well show you so um two by two centerpiece uh but if you actually go to the landing pad kit it's not in it so that might be added later that could be something that they were fucking with uh, but it allows for, like, having uh, symmetrical doors. But I can only find the, um, the, the, two, the one wide here. So it's 6x6x6 six by six by six, uh, to have it to land. The airplane is 9x3. Um, and then the, um, the gas tanker is 7x5. Uh, um, Let's reload again. I've switched to the medium plane just for variety. And as you can see, once you get down to medium, it's it's so much smaller. The larges are just humongous. And having a large with uh, something that needs an atmosphere with a, with a human um, trader is just a huge pain in the ass. Because you need to uh, decompress this whole space here. Now, I'm actually going to make an effort to decompress this, uh, because, just to show that it does take a lot of effort. I can put uh, vents underneath the um, the landing pad. The landing pad landing pads seem to be not airtight. So you can, have, you can go down one more square, make a trench, and then put down vents in there. So let's turn this on. This... I don't think will work very fast. Actually, that works. That's shockingly quick. I was using these two turbo pumps, but this this is shockingly fast. Uh, now that we're getting down to a small amount of gas, and we only have a little bit of um, carbon dioxide contamination, I'm going to switch on these regulator pumps, regulator valves, because uh, that will bring the pressure down much, much quicker. So this is in real time. I haven't compressed anything. At least, I hopefully, I will, I'll remember not to compress anything. And the last kilopascal, of course, is going to be the hardest, because... Um, that's when you've fallen below a, um, a pressure differential threshold. <clears throat> but this, uh, this filter is shockingly fast to move the, uh, to move the gas over. I am, I am amazed at how quickly that happened. With these two turbo pumps, it takes about five minutes for it to move all the gas over. But this seems to be moving... Uh, even the uh, minuscule amounts fairly quickly. Like it's only been what, like, twenty seconds? We're already down to to, to four pascals.
So the reason that I've switched to the regulators, um, if you've watched uh, some of Cascard's um, more recent videos, the regulators pull five moles out of a out of a pipe network, whereas a volume pump will pull whatever is in the pipe immediately adjacent to this. So, um, however many is in your segments divided by those numbers, like those numbers divided by the number of segments, it will then pull everything out of that one segment. So if you have 10 pipes, you'll be removing a tenth of your uh, volume each half second. Turbo pump bumps that up to 10. So it'll be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or the other way around, and you go one more that way than that way. Um, so once you get down to a certain pressure, uh, you're better off using the, um, the regulator valves. And it also seems like these things are some of a bitch of efficient. Like, how, how, how much time have I been vamping for? Like, less than a minute, probably. Okay, we'll leave that on because we want to we want to charge our uh, main tank here. It's nowhere near um, capacity, so we'll explosively recompress the tiny amount of gas that's in the atmosphere back into our um, back into our hangar. It seems like uh, the way that the communications manager gives you contacts is that it will always give you one. Uh, contact from each range. So you'll have um, one uh, that's nearby, one that's the medium range, one that's long range. Now the medium range guys you can still get with your small antenna and the uh, the more distant stuff I think you can just barely get with the um, with the medium antenna. Yeah you can because it's, it's 5,000 watts for the long range the long range traders, but you have to be like pointed directly at it for that to work. And uh, one of the benefits of doing that is that the the medium um, antenna rotates a lot quicker than this bitch. But it seems like they speeded it up. Um, I did a lot of extensive testing with this thing, and it seems like it is a lot quicker. Thank fucking god. Um, also, the the communication manager seems to have been greatly updated in that it no longer um, loses contacts as, as much. So before you could get into a situation where your your communication manager is completely blank and you won't get a new one. If it's blank, it seems to reinitialize the blank spaces and, and give you a new um, entry within like 30 seconds. Now, what I don't like about this system is that if you call someone down and you trade with them and you tell them to get lost and there's still like say seven minutes left of the timer they will wait in orbit for seven minutes like i've if i've already cleaned someone out i think they should you know fuck off basically um they also have seemed to heed the cries of the community or at least my cries and they've now they now allow you to put um, wall segments and stuff uh, in between the landing pads. So over here, I have all the equipment separated by a wall. Now, that means you can do some, some doofy shit, like place a wall segment, like right in the middle of your, um, of your landing pad, but that's just stupid. It will interfere with your landing, and it will hit it and damage the, uh, the trader, and then the trader will blow up. And when it blows up, it really blows up. Oh, yeah. Here's here's another blow up over here. Part of a blow up that occurred. The blow ups are, are very powerful. So these are finicky as well. Uh, just looking at it. So if you come down here, you'll see that there's only um, one section for the threshold. I guess that's what it's called. Now, if And it doesn't need to be plugged in. This is not plugged in. Um, I actually don't know what this data port is doing. I haven't looked at it at all. Uh, but if I do connect it in, then I have a second marker in the um, 
in the com. But it doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't matter if I select this one or if I select the, the center. They will still land in the exact same way. But I can shut the runway off and the, the landing pad will continue to function over there, which is kind of weird. Also, if I remove these segments here and I put more threshold just because it should it looks a little nicer doing that they'll stop functioning I think if I turn them off they'll start functioning the center one will start functioning again but with the two outer ones turned on it just it just won't function uh, there's an additional block that's in here and I'll just remove the closest one here, this one right here, to demonstrate it or to show it. I might demonstrate it too. And this is just a taxi wait point. So the, uh, whatever the ship is will come here and will sit there and wait. I think this might have something to do with having more than one active runway. I think you might be able to bring your, your, um, your traders down and park them on these spots um, and then when you want them again you can you can increment them on the um, on the uh, the data thing I think um, I haven't actually tested that yet but they'll come down and they'll wait here and I'll show you them waiting here in a minute and this is one of the problems too as you can see here we now have two green furnitures and um, just a minute ago, we had this exact same choice. And we're presented with the choice again. It seems like uh, the longer you stay in a session, the more you'll have repeats. I think that's one of the reasons that I didn't get um, I didn't get any of the uh, the larger traders is because um, it was one long 12 hour session and I was just getting the same three or four traders over and over and over again and that seems to occur more often if you if you actually uh, bring the traders down if you actually trade with them they seem to come back more often which is just ridiculous and you can't hold them like you can't bring them down and and put them in a um on a landing pad and then hope for three more to come along because they won't the previous traders have to vacate and there's no other way to reset this. And it's very temperamental. If you reset it manually, it seems to give you the, 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 the same three starting traders over and over again. I've reset it a bunch of, a bunch of times. That may have something to do with uh, seeding um, in the save file. There could be uh, that it, it looks at the checksum or something and will give you um, traders based on that. I'm not sure how the, the traders are randomized, but they are randomized and the randomization is absolute crap. So the gas traders are particularly slow. I have not slowed the footage down. This is how slow he is. Like a fat man trying to vacate a buffet. He's bellied up to the steam trays and he's just piling up his plate. And you don't necessarily need to have um, the runway for, for these guys because there's no wheels. Okay, see, they, he's now stopped and is hovering on the taxi spot right there. Now, I'm guessing this is supposed to be if you want to, uh, if you want to stop it in front of doors and then open the doors after it's come in or something like that. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to be particularly useful in my opinion. And he is not registered as landing. So we can't do anything with him. If you had a particularly long runway, I suppose you could land more than one trader and have them stacked up. But then it doesn't seem like he'd be able to vacate. But maybe they'd be able to vacate if you had like a, th a throughput. 
I really have no idea. It, it just, it doesn't seem to uh, make much sense to me, unless they're putting something in. But you just increment the the, uh, the data block, and it will it will finish this landing process. And there it is. And this one wants oxygen, so let's give her oxygen. So she's already out and about. Oh, did she have glasses before? I can't remember. Okay, so she's buying and selling um, gases. Water at 10 bucks per 100 mole. Dirty volatiles. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's got carbon dioxide and pollutants in it. And then there's NOS. And they still pay you to take um, pollutant, which I think is kind of nice. Not very much, but you know, still, it lowers the cost of, of shit. And you can buy the canisters, which is good, too. Now, I thought you would be able to sell gas, but you don't seem to be able to. You can sell ices, but let's try selling some gas. I haven't actually tried that yet uh, from the updates. You can... But it doesn't seem to be linked to the gas trader at all. Uh, this is from a different session. And as you can see, this uh, particular trader is buying gas. Doesn't want very much of it. Only wants to see, seems to want uh, 20 times 100 moles. Um, and this trader is a farming trader. It's selling seeds and foods and stuff. So it seems to be just random. Okay, for some reason... My tablet isn't reading um, this canister. That is a bug. A new bug, because I haven't seen this bug before. But, uh, thanks, Rocket! Every day's an untested road. So, yeah, that's what happens. What if I tell her, let's tell her to depart and not open the, open the doors. Let's see what she does. I, I'm sure she's going she's gonna to break the doors. Oh yeah, breaks the doors and stops on the uh, on the taxiway. That's very considerate of you, Ink. Bye, stupid. Bye. 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 You later. The UI is a little different, but the important thing is um, the layout of of the hangar, and this hangar is the absolute size that is required to park any vessel in there. And as you can see, it is not super difficult to compress and decompress. Like, it still took upwards of, you know, a minute or around a minute to do it. That could be sp sped up uh, simply by, you know, putting space underneath these, um, underneath the pad and adding more vents. And as you can see, I am not using active vents. I'm using all pa passive vents with a combination of a turbo pump, regular pump, and a, a filtration um, unit. Now, I didn't know the filtration pump was going to pull a lot of gas out of the, out of the hangar, but it does. It, it does it really quickly. So the real trick to getting the last dregs of atmosphere out of... Um, any network, especially a network um, hooked up to a large open airlock type space, is to use the regulators, the regulator valves. Right now these are in, in back pressure just so I can set it to zero and it'll just suck up as much as um, it possibly can. And of course I can automate that with a chip, but this was just for testing purposes, so who cares? As Cascard notice, noted, uh, you should subscribe to his channel because he does great experiments. The uh, regulator valves pull five moles out of uh, an entire network. So if the entire network that's connected to it has less than five moles, this has more than five moles because it's open to air and there's there's a bunch of, uh, of carbon dioxide in there. But if there's less than five moles, it will empty the pipe completely. Now, something that I have noticed with stationaries that I have another video that I've already done that I haven't edited because I am uh, lazy and unmotivated 
is that the game ticks are not synchronized across devices. The ticks to moderate the speed of the game, I think, are tied to the object. Because it looks like when a new object is declared, the, um, the tick throttling is applied to the object at the time of creation. And because the, the, the creation times will be slightly different, they're all not created all at the same time, what happens is, is that uh, uh, in a half second interval, they will pull everything out of these pipes and then it'll go down to zero. Then the passive vents will then equalize with the pressure that it's sitting in every half second. But because they are they are not occurring on the same half second, because one is occurring at like say 0.61 and the other one is occurring at 0.73, you looking at the pipe, you will never see the pipe completely empty. And um, because the pipe uh, is empty when this synchronization occurs, when the synchronization of the of this network and those events occur, it will then draw in. A certain formula I think it's 40% there's it, it's it's like, like like it should it should equalize half like it should pull half of the of the pressure from from one area into this network but it doesn't work out that way because there is some sort of formula that's going I think I showed it in another video I can't remember I might have deleted that video um, but it's I think it it equates to like 40% of half of of the like like half you you have half the pressure or the the equalization of the pressure so it'd be it'd be half in one room half half in the network and then forty percent of the moles of that half it sort of works out to it's it's odd and I'm absolutely certain that that's not correct but if you go if you go looking inside the dill to see what it's actually doing it's it's a little bit more complicated than you think and um it might be based on a real equation. I have no idea. I haven't looked it up. Um, I don't care that much. So just to recap, um, the maximum size you require to fit any and all um, traders in is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six high. And that will park any trader and you can fit the uh the, the largest doors um on the oh is there wreckage oh look at that the doors have re the uh the hangers have have wreckage types on them that's nice uh, and that fits that fits really nicely um up and down like this like it was meant to and the maximum length of a runway is 20 squares, so 20... I'm not going to count these out because 20 is too long to count out. That's stupid. And without a beacon, it will work without a beacon. Um, the, uh, the the landing pad will work without one of these. The um, spacecraft will just aim here. It'll aim to touch down here at about a four, at, at a 45 degree angle glide slope. I I believe it's 45 degrees and you may not want it to do that because maybe you have a building up over over there so anything that would be in that path um, you can or you can stick your uh, you can stick one of these up uh, inside you can even make a huge long um, winding corridor and actually have them go to these things and it be a really stupid obstacle course why you would do that i have no idea but you can do that with that thing and you can set it to a negative number too so this could be sitting like uh, above um like if i were if i were to attempt to land a um, um uh, a space trader and not an airplane not a plane trader and I were to sit that on top of the um, on top of the hangar, I can then set it to negative nine, and it will land like right here. I, you can do that; it does work. Or you can put it underneath your tarmac uh, or whatever you wish um, to be aiming at. 
and it does seem to it does seem to go from one to the other. Like it does, it seems like you can put more than one in. I think I tried putting more than one in. I actually can't remember if I did. It is temperamental though. Uh, but the runway is only needed for um, for the airplanes, and there are only two planes in the game, and there are only two trader planes, and that is the medium-sized plane and the large-sized plane. And I do not think they attempt to land in a vacuum. I'm not 100% certain on that. It would seem uh, like it shouldn't. Also, these squares that you use here do not matter. As you can see, I have um, uh, runway squares coming into the landing pad. And they use uh, the traders use the landing pad, no problem. But um, the, uh, the landing stripe does not light up. So if I put the landing stripe around there to make a perfect square, which I would much rather be able to do, because this or the other slashes is stupid and I don't like that. I would like a more elegant uh, shape to put there. It doesn't matter. They may be, they may, it looks like they might be changing a lot of different things and making it so maybe that traders on planets will all be aircraft will all be um, uh, single stage to orbits and in space they'll all be um, rockets or shuttles or variations on that. I don't know but it seems like they're separating those two things out or they might have been separated for testing purposes. I don't know. I have literally been testing for 12 hours. I haven't sat at the game for 12 hours straight. A lot of the time was spent uh, waiting for things to occur especially this um, these fucking timers, because I'm not sure how to override these timers, except for, you know, like, editing the save file and getting them to, um, expire more quickly. And the randomness of what you get is a total mixed bag, and I fucking hate it. I would much rather them just, you know, go back to the same number as you had before, like, nine traders will show up, and you can pick and choose them, even if they, even if they put like, oh look, I can see, I can see the edges of the skybox. The skybox is round. Isn't that neat? I thought the, uh, the skybox is round. Cool. <clears throat> Anyways, um, uh, the way that it is now, it's just a, a whole lot of fucking hurry up and wait, and. The one thing that I hate, I hate when a game makes you do that. It makes you do something that's that's not fruitful. Like one of the biggest things, one of the biggest examples I can give you is Graveyard Keeper, where all the new um, missions and the DLCs are just a bunch of useless fetch quests. Like go to this person and get this item. Go over here and get this item. And several people have said to me, "Oh, that's just like Monkey Island." No, it's not. Monkey Island gives you puzzles. These aren't puzzles. These are just go here and this person will tell you a bit of story and give you a, a cup. Go here and this person will give you um, a scroll and a bit, bit of backstory. It, it's, it's, pretty much, it's pretty much worthless. I hate it when games make you wait and these timers are just idiotic. They could solve it very easily by... Um, as soon as a trader departs, they fuck off out of the airspace and a new, a new trailer, trader is populated. That one tiny little change would make this a whole lot more bearable. Because if you see people, if you see traders that you don't like there and you want a specific trader, you can spend the time to call it down, land it. That'll take you three, uh, three to five minutes to do. Then you tell it to get lost right away. It leaves another 45 seconds for the for the animation to play and then you'll get a re-roll of a new guy having to sit here and wait 24 minutes for for this all alloys to get lost and give me a new trader makes me not not want to use traders and you don't have to use traders there the, there is the, there is nothing in the game that incentivizes you to use traders you can make um, you can um, 
you can create a lot of commerce and buy shit from the traders uh, easily. And it seems like they give you more stuff now. But anyways, I'm just going to continue ranting. That's all all the information that I that I gleaned out of my my 12 hours is, you know, the size of that and things like that. So hopefully that information is uh, useful to you. And uh, I'm going to go try drown myself in an inch of water. See ya.